Good morning. Today is the 11th day of August in this 20, 23rd year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I um, have a few people to remember today. First off is my uh, brother-in-law, Kenter McClellan. Kenter uh, had an incident yesterday. He was hospitalized. They're doing testing. They kept him overnight. He's uh, conscious and um, aware of what's going on and uh, in pretty good shape this morning uh, from what I hear from my sister Susan. So keep Kenner McClellan in your thoughts and prayers today along with his wife and my sister Susan. Also a, a happy anniversary shout out to uh, Brian and Melanie Starr, my daughter and son-in-law. They're vacationing with us. Uh, today is their wedding anniversary and uh, give thanks for their life and love for one another uh, and pray many a blessing for many years to come. Uh, other than that, I think uh, we've got a beautiful day before us, probably hot again. Uh, I see over, I see pretty clear blue skies, uh, so uh, stay cool wherever you may be and uh, enjoy the weekend as it comes up. Tomorrow there's a uh, Celebration of Life service for Linda Miller, who passed away uh, a week or so ago. That's at 1 o'clock at our Emmons Preserve Clubhouse. So uh, all are welcome to be a part of that to uh, bring some measure of support and comfort and uh, love to, to Linda's family and to remember the, the goodness that was her and her love for us. A prayer by Martin Luther. Lord, I know no one in heaven on our, and on earth who gives me the same assurance as you do through Jesus Christ, <clears throat> nor do I have it in all friends, works, or honors. Lord, I have no refuge except in the affection which is now your sons. Without this hope, we would be lost. Amen. Third chapter of 1 John. From this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or a sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has this world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to, to help. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. The God, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. The word of the Lord. Helping others in need, in the devotion by Martin Luther. If we should be willing to die for other fellow believers, shouldn't we even more shouldn't we we be even more willing to give up our property and belongings? If we have possessions and don't share them, if we don't give food, drink, clothing, and so on. In other words, if we are greedy and stingy, then we aren't Christians. Today people are loudly complaining that those who have come to know Christ are the ones hoarding money. This is happening to such an extent that they fear God may unleash his wrath soon. 
Of course, God is merciful, but he isn't idle. He doesn't let sinners go unpunished. He's merciful to the humble who fear him. It's foolish to interpret this passage as referring only to people in extreme needs. Besides, there are several degrees of love. We shouldn't offend an enemy. We shouldn't help our, we should help our fellow believer, and we should support members of our household. We know Christ's condemnations, or Christ's commandments about loving our enemies. But we owe even more to a believer who loves us in return. We should help out whoever doesn't have enough to live on. But what should we do if that person betrays us? We should help them again. We owe the most, however, to the ones related to us. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. It's a general rule that if a person who has property and belongings doesn't take the need of a neighbor to heart, then that person has no love. And join me in prayer. Lord, let the witness of our faith and our confidence in you and your love for us be our love for each other. Might we reflect your Christ's love to the neighbor in need, to the brother and sister that we embrace in love, to any person that would come and seek our help. Might we be of help and service and be the Christ for them. Grace us, O Lord, and bless us this day with your presence. We thank you for the gift of salvation in Christ our Lord. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for your help that comes in our times of need. We help you for the confidence we have in Christ, who sees us through whatever life may bring. And this day, O Lord, we give you thanks for Brian and Melanie and others that celebrate their anniversaries of, of life together. We thank you for their care and nurture for the family that they have brought into this world that has been a blessing to us. And we pray many and good days ahead for them. We pray, O oh Lord, this day for the people of the Ukraine, that they might have your help to see them through their present travail and bring them peace at last. We ask your healing hand to be with Kenter McClellan, with Linda Danley, with Tom and Nikki and Lisa, with Elaine Wilson, with Miriam Martin, with Donna Dorn and Nancy Shaw, for Evelyn Ragg and Evelyn Tompkins, for Mark and for Katie, for Cheyenne, and others that we know of, that we, am, that we employ your help for. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, giving you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.